Hello and welcome to our online catechism class. Today we're going to take a look at what baptism is. So this is just a, an introduction to, to baptism. So we have here uh, water. Which one's better? Water from the uh, faucet or water from the um, bottled water? Uh, you know, people will uh, have different preferences. Some will say, well, bottled water is better because uh, it's been inspected and might not have some uh, bacteria in it that a well or ground spring might have in it. Um, others feel that the water faucet is okay because um, your own well or the city supply is constantly tested to make sure that it's safe. But uh, today in our lesson, we're going to talk about water, but uh, not about drinking water. Rather, we're going to be talking about the special way that God wants us to use water uh, in baptism. First, I want to do a little review with you guys. And uh, as far as what a sacrament is, we uh, the word sacrament is not a word that you'll find in the Bible. It's a human term, uh, but it's used to describe some things that the Bible talks about. Uh, and so we have a definition of a sacrament, and it's a three-part definition uh, that uh, you can uh, you can write down. Uh, first of all, it is a sacred act that was instituted, which is a fancy word that means started by Christ Jesus. Second thing is is it uses an earthly element or elements that are connected with God's word. And the last thing that a, a sacrament is that it offers, gives, and seals to us the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. So when you have those three things, uh, you have a sacrament. A sacred act started by Jesus uses earthly elements that, were connect, that are connected to God's word, and it gives us the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Always remember, okay? What is it? The sacraments are something A, God does for us, or we do for God. Which one is correct? Always, always. The sacraments are something that God does for us, not something that we do for, for God, something that he gives to us. What is baptism? That's the first question that we're going to ask here. And for that, we're going to look up at Mark chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. And uh, here, and my video is in the way, isn't it? I can't move it. No. Okay. So uh, here, Mark chapter 7 says, The Pharisees, those are the religious leaders in Jesus' day, and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups and pitchers and kettles. And then there's a footnote there, and a footnote says that some manuscripts add and dining couches at the end. Dining couches. Okay, well, that's pretty significant. Okay, here's why. Uh, in Jesus' day, uh, they had uh, the religious leaders were very concerned about uh, being unclean in some way. How might we be unclean? Well, uh, they had all these cleanliness laws, and it wasn't about um, hygiene, about keeping your hands clean, but uh, rather uh, it was a, a spiritual thing that you had to do a ceremonial washing to cleanse yourself before you ate. Because if you touched something, maybe you touched something uh, in the store and uh, and it was unclean because a bug had landed there and then you went and you ate something well then you're you're making yourself unclean by eating those things that's what they thought well um jesus uh is uh is refuting that but here uh, the gospel writer mark gives us a little information tells us about what they did and so they what they would do so that they wouldn't become unclean is they would have the ceremonial ceremonial washing and they would wash things like cups, pitchers, and kettles. And you got to think back to this day when uh, they uh, didn't have running water like we have today. They would have to go to a well to draw the water and then carry it back to their house. And uh, I think uh, one gallon of water is like eight pounds. And so if you if you carry a bucket, you know, that's that's pretty heavy of water. 
how do you think they're going to use that water? And you don't have running water. I have to go get the water. They're going to use it very sparingly. Okay. So if you're going to wash something in uh, uh, in this day, are you going to uh, maybe you're going to take your cup, dunk it in the water to wash it? Maybe, but but you know if you did that, you just contaminate the whole bucket of water. You'd have to go and get some more water. So probably more likely what they did was instead of uh, you know sticking the cup into the water, they'd pour water on it, right? Okay. Well, how might you wash a pitcher or a kettle? You're going to do the same, dunk it under water? Well, then you'd have to go and get some more water um, to wash the next pitcher. A dining couch was a big slab of rock, okay? And it was huge. Okay, you're going to dunk that under water? Probably not, no. Well, why are we talking about this? The word washing that is used here in the Greek, the original language of the New Testament, is the word baptizo. It's where we get our word baptize from. And so it gives us a basic meaning of what the word baptize means. Baptize simply means this, to apply water in any manner for washing. To apply water in any manner. It could be pouring, could be sprinkling, could be wiping, could be putting under water, but it's to apply water in any manner, okay? And the reason I make a pretty big deal of this is because there are some people who say that to properly baptize someone, you need to put them entirely underwater, um, something called immersion. And that's not accurate to what the Bible, the Bible says. So baptize means to apply water in any manner. Well, there's another verse here, Matthew 28, 18 and 19. This is where Jesus starts baptism, where he instituted baptism. It says this, Then Jesus came to them, that's his disciples, and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And how do you do that? By baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You see that there are two ways to make somebody a disciple of Jesus. How is that? There's two ways here. One is baptizing. And uh, and the other one is teaching, which comes right here. Teaching. I'm not going to write that in there. Oh, I can write it in here. That's pretty neat. Look at that. Teaching. Baptizing and teaching are ways to make someone a disciple of Jesus. But this is what we're looking at. Baptizing. Okay. Baptizing them. And how do we do that? In the name. Name of the Father, God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Remember the name for that? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Trinity, triune, our triune God. Now, why is this? Why in the name of the Father and, and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Well, think about what you own. What kinds of things do you write your, uh, your name on? Do you write your name on uh, on a, a Kleenex? No, you're not going to write your name on a Kleenex. Well, why not? Because you're going to throw that Kleenex away. It's a piece of garbage, right? You don't write your name on things that you're just going to throw away, but you write your names on name on things that are important to you, that you don't want to lose, uh, that are significant to you, that uh, you're claiming ownership of. Well, what did God do in baptism? What is he doing? He is, in a way, he's writing his name on us. He's writing his name saying, you're mine. I want you. I care about you. You're important to me. I'm not going to lose you. That's what God does in baptism. He, he writes his name on us. Uh, next verse we're looking at is Ephesians 2.19. It says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people. And also, what? members of his household how do we become members of god's household out of his family through baptism it's it's god's way of adopting us into his family you know when somebody is adopted uh, they don't have a father or mother they don't have a family and then a family comes along and says we want you we want you as part of our family we adopt you 
and uh, and they're made uh, a member of that household. Well, we are made members of God's household through the adoption that uh, he um, uh, he did uh, when he brought us into his family through baptism. Next Bible passage is from Isaiah 43. It says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. How do you know that you belong to God? It's through your baptism, where he marked you as his. You are mine. Finally, uh, Ephesians 5 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy. And how so? Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. What's that talking about? You guessed it, baptism. And what did it do for us? And to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. That's what God calls you because of your baptism. He's washed your sins away. He's made you holy and blameless, connected you to Jesus. That's what you are. So this uh, leads us to answering our question, what is baptism? And you can fill this in on your sheet. Baptism is the application of water by God's command in the name of a triune God, by which God adopts someone into his family and washes him or her clean from all sin. Now, if you need time to write that down, I'm just going to let you pause the video. I'm not going to pause here. We're just going to keep going. Our next question uh, is, why do we baptize little children? Maybe you've been to a baptism in church. You've watched as a baby was baptized. Well, why do we baptize little children? Well, first of all, we're going to look at Matthew 28. Okay, once again, this we looked at this before, but I'm going to focus on a different part of this. It says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of whom? All nations. Everyone, right? That's who God wants to be baptized. Everyone. All nations, okay? And uh, so there's no reason to exclude little children from that. Okay, so number one, we baptize little children because they are included in Christ's words, all nations. What's another reason? Psalm 51.5 tells us, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. And John 3, 5 and 6 says, Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Sinful people give birth to sinful people. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, gives birth to Spirit. Okay, he gives us a new spirit. So another reason. What's another reason that why we baptize little children? Because as we saw, they too are sinful. We baptize little children because they are sinful by nature and must be born again to be saved. Galatians 3, 26 and 27 says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, right? We're all children of God through faith because we've been baptized. Baptize little children because they can believe and be clothed with Christ. I've seen this with my children. Um, the uh, children. Some people ask, well, what? How, how, can a, how can a little child believe? It's not possible for a little child to have faith to believe. But I've looked at each one of my children when they're first born, when they're babies, tiny little babies, and uh, they might be crying and screaming and and uh, and scared. And then you, just as a newborn baby, place that baby in the arms of his or her mother, and they calm right down. How do they know? How do they know that this is their mother? How can they trust their mother even at such a little as a little baby? Well, if they can trust their little as a little baby, trust their mother. Well, can they also trust God, their father, who made them? Absolutely. They can believe, right, and be clothed with Christ. Mark 10, 
Uh, Jesus says, uh, or this is from Mark 10, he says, People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. That means he was angry. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. God holds up little children as an example of faith. He says, let them come to me. Do not hinder them. So finally, we baptize little children because uh, um, Jesus told us to. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them. Let's answer, let's ask some uh, questions here and uh, um, see uh, uh, see how you uh, think about them. I agree or disagree, water that has been used for a baptism should not be poured down a drain after baptism because it is special water. Um, the water uh, without the word of God uh, is just plain water. And uh, so pouring it away after baptism is not wrong. It's not a special water. It's the water connected to the word of God that makes it um, important. Next question. Evaluate. Meg, a teenager, wanted to be baptized standing in a river instead of standing next to the baptismal font in church. Uh, what do you think about that one? Uh, wouldn't be anything wrong with that, right? Uh, it might make her, uh, her baptism a little bit more memorable for her, uh, but it isn't going to make uh, her baptism any better than a baptism of somebody who's... Uh, it, in front of church, baptized with a baptismal font. I uh, agree or disagree. Uh, in an emergency, any kind of liquid like perfume or soda can be used for baptism. Um, it'd be really strange that you'd be in a place where there would be no water and only perfume or soda, uh, because water is so common. Uh, but if no water can be found, um, um, the things like that um, as perfume or water that have been have water in it maybe could use, um, but uh, it shouldn't be substitute for any for any reason, right? Um, that uh, God's word tells us to use water, and that's what we that's what we want to use. Uh, what's wrong here? As a pastor pours water on a baby's head, he says, "I baptize you in the name of the Creator, Rescuer, and Comforter." What's wrong with that? Well. That's not the way that Jesus commanded us to baptize, right? He commanded us to use the words of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, John asked his pastor, why did Jesus tell us to baptize in the name of the triune God? And then in Acts 2.38, Peter talks about being baptized in Jesus' name. How would you have answered, John? Are we supposed to be baptized in the name of the triune God? Um, in... Uh, in the English translation, in the in the name of, in both passages, the Greek in Acts passage says really on the basis of the name of uh, Jesus. So the Acts passage is talking about what uh, baptism is based on, uh, not really giving us a formula of what words to use. Uh, when uh, little Stephanie was baptized, her parents received several greeting cards that expressed the joy that some of their friends had when they heard about Stephanie's birth and her baptism. These cards spoke about Stephanie's christening. Why do you suppose baptism would be referred to as christening? Um, the word christening uh, is a proper word uh, because uh, um, it, you see the word uh, Christ in that word. Don't often use that word um, anymore. Uh, but uh, in baptism, little children are brought to Christ so they can be his children, christening. Uh, here's maybe another way to think of a sacrament. It uh, offers and grants forgiveness, instituted by Christ, connected with God's word, has an external sign. So in baptism, it'd be water. What is baptism? Well, it's water connected to the word, given to all nations. All nations means adults and children. We baptize children because they're included in all nations. They too have sin in their hearts. They're sinful at birth, right? 
and they need it, and finally, they too can believe. By the Spirit, they can, they can believe.